So today we are going to now do a little bit more on why. Yesterday we spent it on how. Today we are going to spend it on why. We are coming back to the why. Why we must be fishers of men. Why we must reach out to souls. Why we must reach out to them today. Why we must avail ourselves. And what I want to say this morning is we must reach out because God has chosen to save with his word. Okay? God has chosen to save with his word. And because he has chosen to save with his word, he relies on humans to preach it. Are you getting me? God has chosen to save his word. His power is released through the gospel. Last night we saw Romans 1 16. I don't know, yeah, Romans 1 16. Where Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for the salvation of everybody who believes, the Jew first and then the Gentile. So the power of God to, to save people, the power of God to transform lives is released through the gospel and it is people who preach the gospel, not animals, not dreams, not vision, not what. It is people who preach the gospel. There's a scripture in Romans chapter 10 verse 14. I would like us to read it. And uh, I'm going to read the Passion Translation. Romans chapter 10 verse 14. It says, But how can people call on him for help if they've not yet believed? And how can they believe in one they've not yet heard of? And how can they hear the message of life if there's no one there to proclaim it? And how can the message be proclaimed if messengers have yet to be sent? Are we getting that? God has chosen to save with his word. But there has to be somebody who is available to proclaim it. And this is important. This is important. We know that <laughs> First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.21 says, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not. It pleased God, 1 Corinthians 1, 21, to King James. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. A lot of times, preaching is like foolishness, like what? You, you are trying to share a message. You yourself, you are not impressed by the message you are God was pleased through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. He has chosen to save he, with his word. So there has to be somebody who is proclaiming it. And in this seminar, you are being called upon to be that somebody. Ah, type in the chat and say, I'll be that somebody. Yeah. Type in the chat and say, I'll be that somebody. Mm. I'll be that somebody. There has to be somebody who proclaims this. Mm. Mm. 
five zero be that number. There is something that really amazes me that 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 God you know you know that God could just save the whole world if he wanted like like a word like a word is written in the heavens like in the sky everybody be saved and the, the whole world sees that big word in the sky everybody get saved now <laughs> but he has chosen not to do that he has chosen to work with us he has chosen to work through us he has he has limited himself to our availability. Do you see that? God has limited himself. And we see this in the scripture. Remember the story of the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8? The man was coming from a religious ceremony. The man was reading the scriptures. You know, God could have miraculously appeared to him in his chariot. Could have just maybe sent an angel. But the Bible tells us the Lord told Philip. The story in Acts chapter 8 told Philip. The Bible says, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go and walk alongside the chariot. You see, go and look. And those are the promptings we are talking about. Sensitive the promptings. When God says, go and visit that person, you just get like a thought. Go and visit that person. You know, send them a message. You know, call this person. I, I've seen, you know, people have come to the Lord and whatever. As I just, you know, responded to those kind of promptings, call this person. Send them a message, you know, what, you know, promptings, sensitivity. The Holy Spirit told Philip, go and walk alongside that chariot. Now we thank God for Philip, because when the Holy Spirit told him to go and walk alongside, Philip ran. The Bible says, so Philip ran to catch up. As he drew closer, he overheard the man reading from the scroll of Isaiah the prophet. Philip asked him, Sir, do you understand what you're reading? The man answered, How can I possibly make sense of this without someone explaining to me? So he invited Philip into his chariot to sit with him. You see where we have now reached? It started with go walk alongside that chariot. Now it has come to come and sit with me. Hey, are you getting this? God limited himself to Philip, to his availability. Now imagine if Philip had said, ah, ah, I can't go there. We would have lost that Ethiopia. And the Bible scholars say it is that man who brought the gospel to Africa. <laughs> he was led, the portion from Isaiah he was reading was this. He was led away to the slaughter like a lamb be offered. He was like a lamb that is silent before those who sheared him. He never even opened his mouth. In his loneliness was stripped away from him, and who could fully express his struggles? For his life was taken from there. Then the Ethiopian asked Philip, Please can you tell me, who is the prophet speaking of? Is it himself or another man? You see, he was reading, but he wasn't understanding what he was reading. Tomorrow when we go back in the how, one of the things I would talk about is you need to overcome 
a temptation of being deceived by people's religious looks. We shall talk about it. I'll talk about it. Some people look religious and you think they don't need the gospel when they actually need it. But Philip started with a passage and shared with him the wonderful message. And as Philip shared, one of the things I like about this portion is that Philip shared with him and then the man said, Hey, look, here is water. Is there anything to stop me from being baptized? The man made his own altar call. Ah. I don't know how Philip preached that day, but he really did a good job. That the man made his own altar call. Say, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And after that, when you read, I want us to read verse 37 and 38. Yesterday, I was talking about uh, being armed with some scriptures, having a, a grasp of what the gospel is about. Now, this verse 37 and 38, it, it is like a, a summary of the gospel. If somebody asks you for a quick, a quick sermon, a quick sermon, what, what is the gospel? What does it take for a man to be saved and whatever? Philip summarized it. Summarized it there. Verse 37 and 38. Let's read it. As Philip said, if you believe, can we read it? Are, are you getting this? God has limited himself to our availability. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, amen. And he answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let's read verse 37 in the Amplified Bible. And I told you, I, I assure you, these kind of things, you, you should be armed with them. Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, if you have a conviction that Jesus is the Messiah, and accept him as the author of your salvation in the kingdom of God, giving him your obedience, then you may. And the man said, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So, you might not say it like that, but you need to have a grasp of the gospel like that. Somebody needs to believe that he's the Messiah. Somebody needs to offer them who their, uh, him their life. You know, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter you know, 10. So, you need to be armed with this. You see how Peter was go, Philip was got unaware. He was still talking and the man said, uh -huh. is there anything to stop me from being baptized? And he had to make sure that the man was being baptized for the right reason. Ah, that is very important. That is very important. Baptism happens after believing. Hallelujah. Baptism in the Bible. Biblical baptism happens after believing. It doesn't happen after being born. It happens after being born again. Hallelujah. Hey. Baptism, biblical baptism happens after being born again, not after being born. Hey. <laughs> so if you still have the baptism of being born, then I strongly encourage you to have another baptism of being born again. In Mark chapter 16 says, go and, verse 16, go and preach the gospel to all creatures. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Okay? So you believe and you are baptized. You are born again and you are baptized. Not you are born and baptized. Are we together? Eh? So Philip had to make sure that 
is doing the right thing. We have to make sure that we are doing the right thing as we are in this priesthood business. Okay? God has limited himself as a rabbi. The other example is this man called Cornelius. Story is in Acts chapter 3. Do you remember that story? Cornelius. Cornelius was such a good man, but he was not saved. Like, I think that uh, heaven saw that this man was just so good and he was going to be the best guy in hell. You know, some people are so good, like they would just be the best guy who the best guy who resides in hell. You know? He was so good. He 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 would give, he would pray, man would even get visions, but he was not saved. Do you know such people? Sometimes you even feel intimidated to preach to them because <laughs> they are better than you. They, they, they have better morals than you. <laughs> you know. So you guy, somebody so good. And now these people, they, sometimes they also get limited because you try to preach to them like, me, now, me, now, I'm better than so and so. I'm better than so and so. I'm better, I'm better than so and so. So they, they are limited. They are good guys. But, you know, you can be the best guy in hell. You're still in hell. And you should not be uh, deceived by people's goodness. It doesn't take people to heaven. It is salvation that takes people to heaven. Yeah. As long as somebody has not confessed Jesus as Lord, it could be your brother, it could be your uncle, who is so nice, who is so nice. But as long as they have not confessed Jesus as Lord, they are just going to hell. They will be the best guy. could be like the head prefect, could be a prime minister or something, a leader there, but they will be in hell. Yeah. So Cornelius was in that category. Very good guy. But God saw that I'm going to lose this guy. So on one of those prayer moments of his, when he was praying, let's see what he said. When Peter arrived in Cornelius, <laughs> I was going to say Cornelius chapter 10, Jesus. <laughs> Acts chapter 10. <laughs> Acts chapter 10, uh, verse 33. Eh? It says, Cornelius replied, four days ago, I was fasting and praying here in my home. Can you imagine? The guy used to fast and pray. I was fasting and praying here in my home at this very hour, three o'clock, when a man glistening in glistening clothes suddenly appeared in front of my eyes and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayers. Your generosity to the poor has been recorded and remembered in God's presence. However, however, you must send for a man named Simon who is staying in Joppa as a guest of Simon. So I immediately sent my men to bring you here, and you are kind enough to come. And now, here we are, all of us in God's presence, anxious to hear the message God has put into your heart to share with us. Now, my question is, when the angel appeared to Cornelius, that powerful vision, don't you think God could have just given the message? him through that angel. Don't you think God could have just used that vision and said, ah, Cornelius, get saved. But somehow, God sends an angel and the angel is, the responsibility is to tell him to send for Peter. Yeah. God has limited himself to us. It had to be Peter to take the message there. The other side, Peter is praying and fasting. He's in his own trance, his own vision. And God is showing him unclean things and is telling him, uh, go and get up and eat. And Peter said, I can't eat. Yeah. When we talk about how tomorrow, the other thing we shall talk about is that you must overcome prejudices. Prejudices. 
if you are to reach some people, you must overcome prejudice. Some of us have religious prejudice. We have cultural prejudice. We have what? You know, there are certain people you can't talk to, certain people you can't talk. You have to overcome certain things to reach out certain people. That one will be in the how, maybe tomorrow. But now we are looking at the why. Ah, are you getting this? So, the other side is in a vision. God is saying, I want you to go to Cornelius. This side, Cornelius is in the vision. Said, Send for people. Somehow, God limited himself to the availability of a person. It could be that God is sending you to someone through this seminar. It could be that God is telling somebody to send for you in this seminar. So if somebody invites you and says, come and pray for us here at home, please don't refuse. It could be an opportunity. If somebody says, ah, you know, we have this kind of sharing, we have this family gathering, do you think you can come and share? Please don't refuse. If somebody, you know, be on the lookout, a certain Cornelia somewhere could be in, could have been instructed to send for you. If you're praying that you get this thought about somebody, send them a message, invite them to church, whatever. Please don't hesitate. It could be a Peter Cornelia situation. Are you with me? God has limited himself to people. Acts chapter 13, verse 2, the, the Bible says they were, verse 1 to 3, generally you read it, but it says they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. They were ministering. They were enjoying the presence of God. It was so sweet. You know, it can be so sweet in church. So sweet. And they were there. Prophets, the Lord said they were prophets and teachers. So they would they are always prophesying, prophesying, prophesying. Go deeper, man of God. Go deeper. Take it deeper, man of God. They were enjoying prophecies, great teachings. <laughs> and God interrupted the service. He says, separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. At a certain point, you have to leave the nice worship, nice what, and go out to bring more people in. Ah, is somebody getting me? Say, separate for me, Barnabas and Saul. And after they had prayed and fasted, the Bible says they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Hallelujah. Somebody has to go out. God, God has chosen to save with the gospel. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, For through the eternal and living word of God, you have been born again. Through the eternal living word of God, you have been born again. And this seed that he planted within you can never be destroyed, but will live and grow inside you forever. Passion Translation. It is through the word of God that we are born again. And it is people, it is you and me, that God is counting on to preach that word. Hallelujah! God has chosen to save with the gospel and he is counting on you to be available to preach it. Hallelujah. 